Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm back and I'm mad. There's no, no video. There's video. No, there's no video. <laughs> there's no video. No video. Hello, Jerry. What's going on? Oh my god. Ah, don't panic. We're live. Don't say fucker bugger. Uh, Hi. Get it out of your system, everybody. Wankers, doodads, balance, doorknobs. I got Otter Bank Brewing <laughs> from Muff. Utter ridiculousness. My favourite place. <laughs> it may or may not have a Justin on the back. I'm not entirely certain if that is him. You can't see the eyes. Hmm. He does seem to be laughing, though, and surrounded by friends, so probably not. A, a Justin from a parallel universe, then? Par parallel Justin. Wow. <laughs> wow. Greetings, Dutch Fulcrum, Dan Lee, Crispin, Crazy Red Coat, Deep bright. Sub. And wow. whoever I'm, I think I saw a Tuffy in there somewhere, and potentially a Pete. Yeah, there he is. Pete, there's Pete. There's a Fulcrum. Did they take the finger off, Jerry? No, but they cut the chunk off, so that's quite good. Did did they use the super glue? No, he used a cauterizer that wouldn't heat up enough to cauterize it. So I was there for twenty minutes, holding my hand like this, so trying to stem the blood. It's quite good. I suggested going back and just getting a scalpel and a lighter, <laughs> and just pressing the fucker. Going on. old school. <laughs> yeah, just go full Rambo. If I'd known it was going to be that bad, I would have brought my soldier iron with me. <laughs> But actually, today is a very sad day. My calendar sad. just reminded me. Oh no! Yes, today marks two years when the last official hobby hangout went. Right. Yes. Did we used to have those? I remember them. Oh, Are you I, sure? Were I, they not Wednesday? Yes. Is today not Tuesday? Yes, but it's. Yeah, it can't, the, be, can't be two years then. Yeah, but then it was last year, Wednesday. 365 days. Uh, oh, okay. we, had a, we, we had a leap year in between, so. Uh, does that count? That would that would add a day, wouldn't it? <laughs> well. it? It would bring things uh, a bit. Yes, we're more impure. Impure interlude is up. It should be at least on YouTube and on Anchor. They're all oh, dead now. And, and funny thing, I I got called again from that weird podcast dude that called me once again <laughs> with a referral code. That's completely utter nonsense. <laughs> right. Well, no, you've hit the big time when you start doing Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Welcome to this week's Imperial Interlude, sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. And also and, Squarespace. And Shark VPN. And least not forget, Manscape. <laughs> you know, I would, but I wax my sack, so there's nothing down there to Manscape. <laughs> it's a waste. A oh, barren it's wasteland, smooth. you say? It's like, Justin, it's like Justin's head. <laughs> like two Justin's head wrestling in a sack. Well, maybe that that's why where his his fear of mutinous tootness comes from. Yeah, uh, makes sense. <laughs> it does make sense. Shall we? I think we should before we do derail before even starting the first saga drink. Saga. Could saga. I avoid this one? I don't think so. <laughs> not with the t not with the title like Saga Trains Battle Reports. Yeah, let, let's just say this is a. Almost orc level of sneaky goodness. <laughs> well, what can I say? Fish bite hooks, and clearly somebody has an idea of what way to attract me to a uh, project. Yeah, th this is not just a hook. This, th <laughs> this is grenade fishing. <laughs> yeah, that is one we're doing. It. Hello, Goram. I seen your ogre post, by the way. So there you go. Yeah, I, I do. I do troll about. There, I mean, you know. Mm, at least yours was public with things in it. There are a few <laughs> private projects that are really starting to grate on me that they've put them up and never put anything into them. I'm just, you know, I don't know how to get rid of them off the site, but I will if these things continue. Well, we, we, we could circumvent that in the way that you host one of these one of the days. <laughs> oh, well, you know, that's one way of doing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we just go through all the privates. That'd yes. be good. That would be good. Show all the secrets. <laughs> Show all of the secrets. So this is actually not Saga, nor has a train, and potentially it's not even a battle report. No, it's none of these things. Oh. It is, however, a load of Star Wars stuff. Which, you know, 
I'm a whore for anyway. Um, I think I've seen this before a long time ago, but I didn't think it had that name. So I'm wondering, has Fulcrum gone in and changed the name? Or maybe he's a uh, commission artist and did it. Yeah, but no, it goes back a long time. And I think I've seen the Asuka before. But I'm positive it wasn't called Sagas, Trains and Battle Report. So, <laughs> well, possibly. I know you're in the chat, so you can tell us. I'm, I'm, I'm betting he just it. renamed it for shits and giggles. Mm. However, uh, if you haven't come across it before, it's not just Mandalorians. Although, my God, look at the Mandalorians. Um, there are clones and uh, and a Jedi uh, going back to earlier down the line. I think previous previous months. Um, and on previous page as well but just the work on it is changed it for giggly shit yeah it's an interesting card choice for the rebels at least it's not the usual camouflage green or no but it matches the the ash grey sort of moonscape yeah that they're based on which also matches what the, the clones and the, the mandos are on as well so it's 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 all themed which I imagine matches a board somewhere or maybe um, there's a board in the works, in which yeah. case we need to see a building, and after that we need a battle report oh, on that board. Bring, bring, bring her up, because I love the... Um, the sniper. I love the sniper, but specifically I love the skin tone and the modulation slash mottling of her alien skin around her temples. Um, you've got that sort of unusual patternation. I can't remember the name of the race remembers me a bit of Trill from Deep Space Nine Star Trek. <laughs> sure. One of them. But yeah, the the whole thing is just beautiful to behold. And I, I love the um I love just that like uh Grimwolf saying there. Uh yeah, it does look a bit like the battle front book cover. Um but the the whole compilation of the miniatures, they all have the same Attention to detail slash neatness that we see in, in 42's work anyway, um, which is always a joy to behold, but I, I just the Mandos are just particularly nice. Yeah, and the conversion of the layer model is also very nice. Hmm. Looks a lot better like that. I do think the aerials are a bit thick, but, you know, maybe 42 doesn't have a cat that can be stripped of its whiskers. <laughs> Or he tried, and the cat uh, mm. did a <laughs> little swish. Did you use acrylic rod for the flight stands? Because I have 1.6 acrylic rod, and it's brittle. Or did you use some form of fiberglass? Asking for a friend. Um, are you where are you? You're not back on the first page, are you? No, I'm. I'm still. Oh, you're still on the. If you the very first entry is, is the Ahsoka model, and it was stunning. It's worth popping back to that. I like the detailing on the Sabine Wren. Yeah, I've got two Sabines because I want to paint one with the guns from early Rebels, and then paint another with the dark saber, and then match the graffiti on her armor because it changes over the the series anyway. Mm. So you'd have early Wren and then late Wren. Like the SS early in the late war, you know. That's a harsh Can't... comparison. <laughs> I don't think so. Not not to Mandalorian. That's fucking not. Oh, our bastards. Fiber optic cable, right? How how is that? Because I imagine there's plenty of flex in it, but it's not going to be particularly brittle. They're yeah. not going to be. Every time you move, they're not going to be winging back and forth like they're on a spring. Spring loaded. <laughs> yep. I was thinking just um, magnet. Because you can just flip the heads out. Better flex. And there's okay. the Ahsoka. Yeah, the Ahsoka's particularly gorgeous. Even though she. Yeah. She isn't official, is he? No. No, no. No, they're not released so good. Is that one of the dark thingy uh, 3D prints? It may say it in there. No, it doesn't just say 3D print. 
trying to remember the name Darkfire Games is that it? I think so where Mo is asking is that a 3D print from Darkfire? See I got there first and it's 3D print folks I'd like to point that out I said 3D print and I still worked that one out for myself and, and you didn't vomit <laughs> anyone else's video frozen? Mine's not um, I don't know about the audio because I mute it because otherwise I hear myself five seconds after I've spoken because of the delay and it's very disorientating yeah, it, uh, but, but the video is fine for me I had uh, similar uh, complaints on other streams not I was hosting but it seems like uh, Twitch has some problems keeping video and audio in sync at some times so h hitting refresh should help you mm. In theory. You're gonna, yeah, you're going to mess out on all our slagging about you, Dan Lee, mind you, but don't worry about that. Yeah, hit F5 now and you won't hear us calling you a cunt. Anyway. So, yeah. Anybody who's after Saga trains or battle reports should look at that. <laughs> you, you know what's going to happen in the next few days. Pe people are renaming their projects just to get your I attention. I honestly don't mind. I don't mind, especially because it's, you know, I'm a whore for any hobby, uh, even GW on occasion. Um, well, as long as I'm not eating spaghetti or something beforehand. <laughs> Don't need too nauseous. Too many spaghetti lead to uh, vomit. <laughs> well, you know, you know. But yeah, it's just it's just a lovely little um, thing. I can't believe I'd missed it before, uh, or at least. I hadn't hit follow because I'd seen the Ahsoka and then just there's been nothing and in that time there's been like four months have passed and a load of stuff's gone in there so that's kind of annoying yeah, and I think the project system crippled me on a on a follow there somewhere and I, I think the project system must be the uh, outside the notifications for the for the whole site well, because usually if new contents is pushed in for certain keywords I get a notification that doesn't do. work on the projects. Oh, no, it works on the projects. I got one today. I got told that somebody had started a Kings of War Ogre army in the project system, and I was on there like stink on Quim. Well, then it's obviously just working partially because I don't. I'm looking for everything that's Legion related, but maybe uh, that only works for new projects and not for current Existing, projects. yeah. I, th I think you need to. And when a new project is started, if you're following something, it will tell you. Okay, that could be it. Ah, well. In other news, we discovered the people who had been talking to us at Atomic Mass Games are no longer with the company. Uh, so we've got a new contact there. So hopefully we're going to get some more Legion and Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff from them in the future and also probably get a heads up. So. Who knows? People may actually find out what's coming before having to sit through a fucking three-hour painting Twitch stream and hear somebody mention it off the back of it. Is there shit at social media and fucking advertising? So, so you're telling me on Tabletop got new contacts for social interaction promotion? Sure. Or, or what, what did I just... <laughs> well, we've, we've got... We've found the person who should be sending us news and stuff considering the last person apparently has left the last time we had a contact from and they pay us to advertise them <laughs> I've never said the last time they sent us anything was when they released X-Men last year and went this is going to be a big one I'm going to send you X-Men over I did the unboxings and then painted them up and then we played the game and that was it we haven't heard anything from them since and in the meantime they ramped out a load of stuff and got the fucking Star Wars Legion license and still nothing from them so hopefully news may actually appear from these fuckwits yeah, so, yeah. he is hoping that uh, there will be a change for the better even though that there are some core people left but that's a food for a different discussion <laughs> I, uh, I don't care who's left yeah, so at the uh, end of the day, they were just board games designers who just kept adding lots of tokens to the tabletop. <laughs> Any of them can fuck off whenever they want, it will make no difference to me. So, shall we venture on to the next project? That Let's is... venture on to the next project, which is a relatively small one. And it is by Jodain. Mm, speaking of companies who forget to send news into people, this is just a quick one. Um, Broadside is coming up, so if anybody's in the, I think it's Milton Keynes for Broadside. Um, 
in the UK broadside coming up around 20 uh, I was going to say around August September, September December 4th there we are December 4th for broad games blah 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 Jordan has been a press ganger so one of their sort of uh, promoters and is building up a couple of forces for War Machine to do a um, I think Amphibious Assault with Cricks attacking uh, Kiodor. So it's different because I don't often see Privateer Press crop up these days. Since they changed the system to third, they lost a lot of people. I don't know if that was because they told people third was coming and then everybody hung up their shoes and didn't bother playing for a while. And then it came out and they upset a lot of people with the changes, but it just sort of died in its arse. <laughs> Shockingly. So it's nice to see something a bit different. Um, in this case, we've got mad Russians with their steam jacks and uh, what appear to be Panzerfausts. And he's repairing them, obviously, because they seemed a bit broken. Yeah, yeah. They've, I think they've gone through the wars, so getting a revamp for third edition. So, just an interesting one for people who maybe haven't seen much in the way of War Machine. It, it's a good one to sort of latch on to to see the sort of thing that he's going to be working on. And also, if you're in the UK you fancy getting to a gaming convention um, just that you know Broadside is currently still on track for the 4th of December it's going to be a very Christmas heavy convention season, very weird salute in November, Broadside in December, who knows what else is going to be in there who knows, I'm not holding my breath for anything <laughs> mm. it's in Kent right, well practically Milton Keynes <laughs> the Milton 100 Club well it's not my fault none of you know how to name things I prefer hordes over war machine but the same game Tuffy is it? I, yeah I, oh, I've, oh, I've no idea the, the same rules you can play one army against the other you can play a hordes army against the war machine and vice versa so it's all the same they all look alike to me privateer press games yeah, and, and and speaking of con, just as uh, Ralph and Chad uh, pointed out, there will be a virtual uh, con by AMG on the 9th to eleventh of September, if right. I remember correctly. Oh, what a shame! I'm planning on taking that week off, so I won't be looking. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to get there in twenty four seven and, and nag them hourly about Star Wars Epic Legion. <laughs> they they actually do respond to me do and they? Yeah, last time I said yeah I'll be back next week yeah you can try <laughs> and they said something along those lines yeah we, we, we can't deny nor confirm anything <laughs> if, seriously if, if there should be a Star Wars Epic Legion I will claim that as a victory and I'll drop dead <laughs> the, the instant it is announced I'll be it's Falling to go, certainly. <laughs> oh, they surely noticed the crazy German, and I think if they start to remember how crazy we can get, they will be very much tempted <laughs> to do stuff. <laughs> oh. Do as we please, or we come over there. <laughs> What's in next? What's Necrofall next? does Marvel Crisis Protocol. Sure. And that's a punchy guy. Did they? Yes. I don't know if it's been announced yet, though, Grim. I'd have to check. I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> and nobody wants that because I need him for the next episode of Imperial Interlude. No, oh, no. Yes. Yep, so a couple of new ones. We've got Zemo and Crossbones. Everybody loves Zemo. He's a funky dancer. Is that the one with the sword? That's the one with the sword. He has and a bit of a sweet, sweet dancing. He had a bit, has a bit of a uh, John Travolta esque uh, Saturday Night stance. He does, which makes sense when you see um, the Falcon and Winter Soldier, and and Baron Zemo busting his moves on the dance floor. Does he do the moonwalk? No, he doesn't. Uh, what He's a fucking, shame. fucking legend. Absolute legend of a dancer. But yeah, different. Well, not different, I suppose. Standard, I would say, because neither of these 
contain the fluoro that Necrotal threw into the, uh, the previous entries that we'd seen. The UV Given, light paintings? The, yeah. Um, but, you know, just continuing in getting the core set of Crisis painted up the tabletop. Oh, they're nice models. I like them. I think uh, I think the purple could do with being a bit more purple. Or lavender, as I believe Free calls it. <laughs> she, she's very... very uh... Very, has a very strong stance on how do you call your purple you things. Sure. <laughs> you know. For whatever reason. Yeah. It, it, same way when you get people going to get a new paint color for the walls and they're going, do you prefer eggshell white, <laughs> off egg white? Shell white or <laughs> off white or yeah, or, and just going, they're all fucking cream. And at some point, sooner or later, they won't be seen anyway because there are stuffed furniture standing in front of it posters and pictures are on the wall so who gives a crap <laughs> correct Amando but yeah I quite like that I quite like Zemo I wish he was a bit poppier in the uh, lavender stakes maybe he's getting some added work I, I feel like he's not done yet yeah, you may feel that way. I think he is done, though. I think that's done, dusted, move on to the next one. Because these are gaming pieces and necrothal, you know, life's yeah. too short. Get them painted, get them on the table, move on. Okay, I, I can understand the sentiment. You know, it means he got painted stuff. I don't. Well, to be fair, I did have a painted set of those and I put them in the studio. So they're probably in Warren's cabinet by now. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe at some point later in this year we will hear from Warren again when yeah when they get the hamsters to his house well they were marking off tarmac yesterday morning to start cutting up the road so hopefully it won't be too much longer if if he's really unlucky they'll cut the line that is there and he will, won't even have landline telephone at some point I don't know if he has landline uh, I, I I bet he has I I, I if not, that's going to be expensive. Mm. So next is a spring clean that we have looked at multiple times. Have we? Yes, Old Hammer from Wartime City of the Damned. Horus 500. Why would you tell me that? You tell me I'm just dragging old shit that you've seen before. No, huh? no, huh? no, huh? no, huh? no. Mm. yes. Huh? Mm. Yes. Fuck you. <laughs> I'd like to point out that first picture, by the way contains one of the Warhammer comic characters that was a limited edition Which, on the far right there. The, the one with the nice hammer? The one with the massive hammer, yeah. I can't remember who the other guy was, though. But I do remember that. They were not, let me repeat, they were not just copies of um, Wolf and what you would call him from Oh, 2018 comic strip, Strontium Dog. They, yeah, they weren't just fantasy versions of them from 2018. They were. They fucking so were. But that's just a wholly amazing collection of Empire. That, that I wouldn't say that's the high watermark because it was starting to go downhill when they released most of these. We were starting to put golf balls in people's mouths. But there were some classics in there. And um, things like the guy wiping the orc blood off a sword, the Griffin standard. The standard was a, st was amazing. A, yeah, that was a standard for uh, all Empire armies. Everybody took the Griffin standard. But then there's also at the back some very old Reichsguard and champions from oh, fuck ages ago, <laughs> early nineties. So early nineties to late two thousands. Yeah, maybe mid two thousands. But still, you know, a decade at least between some of those models, possibly even two. I, I like this this guy on the on the far left, or those two guys with the very ye yellow uh, dressings. You can say look round bases, but you know I refuse to. You can't make me. <laughs> You're not the boss of me, Ray Darcy from Quildare. Yeah, the the guy with the double handed sword striking down. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's one of the ones I never bothered getting because he was he was moving into the ridiculous phase 
of workshopism. The, the, in fact, there's a, a lineup where it has five of them in a row, including the two standards, and he's on one side, and there's a guy with a hammer on the other, and they're they're starting to reach the absurd, not easily rankable phase mm. of the empire. Whenever they repl- I don't know why they replaced the Perry plastics with different plastics. I bought a set of them, and I was just so annoyed that I did. It's like, why have I bought these? These are turd. Uh, licensing yeah, anyway. cost reasons. No, no. Personal no, dislike. They, they the, no, they just they increased the scale from twenty eight to seventy six mil or whatever fucking scale they go for these days, and tell people it's heroic twenty eight. It's heroic twenty eight, but everybody's forty mil to their eye level. Yeah, it's heroic twenty eight. <laughs> Fuck me. Yeah, there, there should be a, a some sort of law. No, crazy. No, it's not. That's fine. You should always say that. The, the worst part of that is that comes from a kid's puppet show from RTE, which was Zig and Zag. And any time the, the... It was like the broom closet in England with um, Gordon the Gopher. But they'd be there annoying... The, the human who was there to read out the birthday cards and introduce the cartoons and any time Ray was trying to get them to do something it'd be like, you're not the boss of me Ray Darcy from Kildare Zig and Zag <laughs> fucking aliens ah. some, some things have the tendency to implement into your uh, brain and you'll never get rid of them so well, that one's just they've stuck with me for fuck knows how long I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know why it's, it's, well to a... be fair it's less it's less psychologically scarring than Bosco was. And if anybody wants to see fucking true horror, that's one for after the show. You just go to YouTube and just go Bosco, B-O-S-C-O space R-T-E or Bosco Children's Show Ireland, something <laughs> like that. You'll find a, it's a screaming lunatic puppet. <laughs> the horror. The horror. That, that exp- anyway. explains so many things, you say. <laughs> mm, well, you know, I would, I would explain that. Then, Anywho. The next one, um, I think we have... Yes, I think very much we have Savi. Or however they take. want to be called. And they started Orcs, obviously. Sure, that's something they probably could have done. Yeah, we were at the last standard Glazers Creek update forty time oh, yeah, the last yeah, yeah. time. So this is this is solely because they've moved away from doing now there are, there are orcs coming, which is terrible. But uh the Imperial side seems to be done and dusted and there's a bit of terrain in there. Skip the orcs. Nobody gives a shit about that. Um but it's interesting to see what's coming. Probably somebody's gonna tell me that these were available in Speed Freaks. However I keep saying we had Speed Freaks, we played Speed Freaks, there was none of this shit in it. And then somebody else go, ah, oh, they sold them separately as an expansion Speed Freaks. I go, oh, it's not fucking in Speed Freaks then, is it? That's what I keep hearing these days. Well, technically. Oh. Te- technically, they had it on the box. In which case, you know, fuck you, that's who works here. But uh, some chunky bits of kit, and I like things like the barrels. There's particularly, if you zoom in on the top right beside the massive blue dildo. Tin, tin can thing which isn't a tin can but could be I like the big stack of barrels which is something GW sold at one stage on, with the little metallic pallets um, and they've just gone you know what if I get like four sets of these and glue them the fuck up I've got a big barrely ammo fuel dump thing uh, and shit like that I like because it's what you'd expect to see Yeah, it's, it's like the um I can't remember where I've seen it. Um, the the uh, was it the Battle of the Bulge film where it, they go? Oh my God! Their drums were empty. They're after the fuel, and no, then they drive forward, and the no, Wehrmacht is destroyed as they push barrels down the hill, set them no, on fire. It was miniature related. Somebody made a huge pile of jerry cans. Oh, that works too. Uh, Bowder in fifteen mil would be my guess. It, it looked very nice as a, a terrain piece. Mm. It is if it's what I'm thinking of. It's gorgeous and it but, would also fit the imperial army style to have something yeah. like that but this is this is clearly a mixture of i'm not going to say the very very old 
because I mean those barrels are only ninety nine. Yeah, but the, the like third edition of forty k. The but tank then traps the stuff and is quite new. The tank traps are ancient, and the tank traps and the barrels are the same. They all came on the same sprue, along with the four pointed palm trees. Yeah, for and, third edition. And this this four pointed uh, whatever mm. thing you yeah. Can call it. Yeah, not quite a a check hedgehog, but something similar. There's tank traps actually go better as check hedgehog. Yeah, and the, the larger pieces are mainly newerish types. Ah. The the most of it was reissued on the Conquest magazine because I've got some of that as well sticking right. around. Oh well that's that's a way to fill up an issue, isn't it? Yeah. This week. This week we give you something new and exciting that costs us quite a bit. And here's something that's twenty years old. That'll keep the cost down. Yeah, though to be fair, if you uh, do the math over the whole complete conquest series, if you just focus on the terrain and just pay for those issues, you get out on top of it. <laughs> which I did. Uh, the, <laughs> they were first introduced with third edition, which I think was ninety nine. I could be wrong. Pretty uh, sure se- ninety seven se- se- or seems ninety seven right. or ninety eight was Gorka Morka. Yeah. So, yeah, the year after that. Not 97, year was. 97 was Gorgomogo, and uh, that's more or less the year I jumped into the, that whole rabbit hole that is Games Workshop. Mm, never jump into a Games Workshop rabbit hole. That's the worst kind. Anyway, yeah. if you aren't painting Space Brits, War Games Atlantic soon will be. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't know if I've been seeing that they're doing cannon fodder. So I... Penal Legion slash just generic space grunts as the new sci fi box. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was asking them today has anybody put any Dark Age Irish heads on them? Because I just think a load of penal battalion with big, you know, big shaggy lot, not just the shaved head, shaved face, grungy looking, you know, penal, but proper. Here's some locked in a, in a, fucking underground prison and then given a gun and sent out to their death and I got a response back from War Games Atlantic going a whole legion of Jerry's you say (laughs) fuck you Hudson (laughs) fuck yourself anyway well that would be a sight to be seen Mm. next project then is nothing what I would expect can of fodder war has never been so much fun very much true Double plus good, as Can- Mr. Orwell would say. Cannon fodder always reminds me on that old PC game. Yes, cannon fodder. Yes. Yeah, top down, two little guys going up the way as things came towards you. Big heads. And very, um, very many. Uh, I've never seen crazy. Alien Three Grimwolf. I own it. I've just, I heard it was filmed through a yellow filter and looked like vomit warmed up, and just can't bring myself to put it on. <laughs> But when they released them in Blu-ray in a box set, I bought it. So I have Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, and whatever the fourth one's called, Requiem. Requiem for a Dream. Alien Requiem for a Dream. I don't know. Anyway, I own them. I've never seen 3 and 4. Like the Matrix films. I walked out of number 2, and I've never been able to get past it to the end. So I've never seen 3. 2 was so appallingly shit. That, I just can't break myself. There is no reason to watch 2 and 3. I, well, I did, and it's not now stick with one that's a good, good movie and yeah oh, just just ignore the fact the other ones um, I've only ever walked out of, I know, I've sat through the entire in the cut film with Meg Ryan it's fucking appalling um, in the cinema but Matrix 2 was enough to get me to get up walk out <laughs> only time I've ever walked away from a fucking film anyway I digress we have here quite a long project again actually there's a few of these tonight that have been sort of languishing that we haven't been here there are pages back um, which we've not explored but it's a nice well compendium who would have thought it based on the name of various miniatures across time and space so you have the likes of SPAC marines looking like a proper ultramarine because they were the least codex of the chapters remember that every ultramarine had their own personal heraldry and people used to tell them off for not being codex enough that fucking changed. Um, but also, World War II figures are in there. You've got some um, Game of Thrones and uh, bits and bobs. It's a very, covering a very, whole, very mixed, whole fucking line. Very mixed yeah. project. 
I love it. I like the tanks. Both the Space Marine and the uh, British tank as well. You also get a whole blurb on unit markings, which is handy. Obviously, we've had a particularly big unit marking thing done for the Hobart's Funnies one, and there's a few others kicks around, but it's nice just seeing sort of the breakdown um, if people are trying to do something. Obviously, this only really, really works if you're doing the Northumbrian 50th, but, uh, you know, you, you can it's try. Worth a you, punt. you never know what works, what sticks. Very true. I mean, the Imperial Guard platoon marking system is based on the old British marking system. Although they probably don't do that anymore, do they? Now I think about it. Possibly I imagine not. that's out the fucking window as well, in favour of every Imperial Guard unit as a fucking floating sky baby or something with it. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Floating sky babies? Probably a floating sky baby. Did you, uh, what was the best colour for Blanco? Crazy. I mean, Imperial Guard are no more. I've got boxes full of them. You're not the boss of me. Ray Darcy from Kildare. Jeebus, how long is this project? <laughs> well, this is only page one. There are multiple pages. If people are interested in just a hodgepodge, so it's not a specific thing, but it's, it's really nice inspiration for just a whole variety, or just going in and stealing ideas. I really like the Escher there at the end. Not the miniature, obviously. I've got the original Escher miniatures. Much nicer. But the colour scheme's particularly Yeah, nice. the, the tartan looks lo lo lovely. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a good look. I'm not sure what's happened to her ginger friend there. I'm hoping that that's some sort of joker style -y <laughs> face paint in a big grin and not just that she's been chowing down on some poor fucker. No, some poor I'm, scabby I'm guessing... got a bullet in the head and then she got eaten. I'm, I'm guessing she was doing her makeup while somebody fired up in a reactor and then just went all over the place. Russian green is really good for Brits and not any good for Russians. There's a few Vallejo colours like that where you look at the name and you go, mm, this would be perfect for this army and then you get them and you realise, no. <laughs> English uniform is particularly good for some of the uh, the US. Maybe the, well, there no. was a mix-up in naming scheming. <laughs> Somebody dropped the box of no notes attached it, to the, the, the it, print. It is, yeah, it is very... Oh, I'm trying to remember it's who did the artwork for Alan Moore's Killing Joke, but it's that style yeah. of just massive Joker smile. You know, you want smile, smile X away. That's why I never bothered putting makeup on um, female models because it is very hard to do unless you're fucking on point with it. There or, was, or it's a very big miniature. Yeah, there was um, what you call her? Jennifer Haley. I got massively into Jennifer Haley's work when she used to have a blog run by her ex-husband called The Paint Tricks. Um, and the work she did on that was fucking amazing. Uh, unfortunately, that, you know, presumably whenever they got divorced, he just let it lapse or just let it die in its arse. Um, but she, she did a set of Rackham Fianna and they were gorgeous. All with light blue eyeshadow uh, and um, lipstick. I said light blue. It was like a, a, a vivid electric blue. It was just it was so good. So well done. The and I looked at it and I thought, I'll give that a go. And then the model went immediately in the death hall <laughs> afterwards. It's like, in the death hall with you. Don't talk about that anymore. Go on now. Bye. The, the name rings a bell, but I can't seem to remember from where I've heard it. She ended up working as a studio painter for a few massive companies. She was working for Privateer Press at one stage and Reaper Miniatures. Um, so much so, Victoria Lamb and herself ended up having a miniature named after both of them combined for for War Machine uh, called Victoria Haley or Jennifer Lamb. I think Victoria Haley. So they, they took the, the first name of one and the surname of the other uh, and made them a special character for one of the factions. Um, did, but yeah, did, she, amazing painter. 
didn't, she, didn't she start a, a YouTube channel on her own a few months ago or a year or two? If she did, I'm unaware of it. I used to get slagged off by my mates because the first thing I would do when I got access to a computer was sit down and see if there'd been any updates. Has she painted <laughs> anything new? What are you doing? Are you looking at miniature porn? It's where we spawned the phrase miniature porn from in the early 2000s. <laughs> What's Jared doing? He's looking at that painting slags miniature port again. Jennifer Go fuck off. Haley? It's all for me. It's all for me. How do you spell Haley? H A L E L Y? Haley? Yeah. Let's see if I'm totally wrong on this. You might be. Go Jen Haley. And then I go painting. Oh, no L. Okay, I was so close. H A L E Y. Lost control. Blah, 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 blah. Dark sword. I knew she painted there. Putty and paint. Ooh. Yeah, I've already worked that one out, Grip. The problem is there's a delay, mate. By the time you type that in, we're already 10 seconds ahead of you and have found it. <laughs> anyway. Oh, God. Now, I've got somebody. But, the, oh, this is wrong. My Google Foo had been stronger in years past. Oh, uh, I've got her. Jennifer, Jennifer Haley painting DVD on the Cool Mini or Not forums. Oh, now, the Cool Mini or Not, yes. Shh. She released one along with uh, Natalie something. No, Natalia. They they did like it was like painting secrets DVDs. Yeah, but that, that, I almost bought one of those, and then <laughs> I went, you know what? I don't care. But no, the Paint Tricks website was fucking amazing. Yeah, but but I'm if somebody I'm sure make the way back machine work, that would be good. It's, Do that. It's not the uh, the one I was thinking about, so we can. I'll happily carry on with the next project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can do that. I'll just sit here and think about some of the work. Jenny, it's where I discovered future floor polish. She used that to make a, a, a wash to do undead using like bestial brown floor polish and just wash it over bone. And it was done. Oh, wash it over white fucking spray primer. It was like, bam, skeleton done. I looked amazing. It's like, oh my god! And it took me six years to find out future floor polish was fucking clear in the UK. <laughs> it was like, you fucks. It was a different time, the internet, I'll tell you that. The traps of getting tips. Six, six years to discover the fucking thing had been sitting downstairs in the cupboard all that time. Very annoying. <laughs> so, next one is Rick Citizens of Felstar, Adventures in Frozen City. Yep. Practically Saga, although not really. Frostgrave. Almost. Almost. Um, we had seen some of the heroes. Yeah, th there has been a slight update. I commented yeah. on one or two. We left so, off with this lovely dude, Nyarav, the infantryman. Yep. So we've, we've seen a few more pop in since there, including the beginnings of some of the rabble to throw against them. Still have some of the old confrontation miniatures on Cool Mini or not? My word. Halfling mm. thieves, as always. Go uh, fund me from 2019. <laughs> now you're okay, mate. Naya's and thieves. Yep. Properly equipped with uh, pans and stuff. Well thieving halfling bastards but one of them's got a pan the pan is not in the hand because I have that box over there pan is just on the sprue but nobody's got a chicken because there's a little chicken and see the guy whose hand is out that you're hovering over at the moment yes all they need to do is take the chicken off the top of the standard and put it on his arm like he's got a hawk but it's a chicken I think that would look <laughs> fucking amazing but maybe that's just me anyway don't, um, don't kill the chicken <laughs> Like a lanker chicken hawk. And there's Baroness Adela de Morla or whatever. Blind witch? Yes. Um, 
bit of green stuff work there because a lot of these are based on the oath mark slash frostgrave boxes uh, obviously the halflings are off the halfling box from wargames atlantic but there's a lot of conversions going on here so the green stuff very cloak thing going on um obviously we've seen benoit de morlax knigget with his really annoying shield i can't get past that shield because the uh the weird markings on in front or why um i just have issues with the shields and that's it that one has a big cross on it which is fair enough if you can't be arsed painting a cross but if you don't want a cross on your shields or other quartered sections on your shields the top left bottom right are are uh raised raised and the other two are in relief um so, so you're uh, not yeah, getting there, a, f- a flip there was like a there was about a five minute rant when i unboxed that set that lloyd edited out because <laughs> it wasn't just that they've got some of the shields have got gorgeous wood grain on them on the back up against the you know so the reverse of the shield so like he has really nice wood grain on the back of that halter or heater um but then there's another shield that's like just a, a round Viking shield that has just wood paneling, just slats, and there's no wood grain on it. And you're going, why are you put wood grain on the back of this shield that nobody's going to fucking see? But no wood grain on the front of that shield that's going to be facing towards every fucker on the tabletop. <laughs> Who designed this sprue? And I just went off on one, and Lloyd went, I think people didn't need to hear five minutes of you ranting all about that. I think they did, Lloyd. Well, let's face it. These kinds of runs are the best thing, and I think, and Lloyd, I think so. l- listen to me, Lloyd. Don't hang he up won't. yet. Listen to me, Lloyd. Yeah, too late, he's gone. You you need to collect these snippets and make a special edition video for the Christmas times. Just, We're just ha- half an hour to an hour of anybody opening boxes, going on on tangent about stuff they don't like. To be brilliant, honest, it's mostly just me. And after after the abuse that John and. Uh, Justin got for their negative parts of the uh, kill team unboxing. I don't think they're ever going to complain about anything on unboxing again. I still will do because I couldn't give a fuck. Why? So, you, you are telling me so, there was a backlash of Gulu fanboys because they well, said yeah. that there's things in this box we don't like? Who knew? Who knew that they would be so outspoken? Huh? I, I just, for, for those people, in, just in case there's one watching, I have a very, very special something for you. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. Collins. Um, one of the things was the layer of the sprue is really bad because if you're building an orc, it's not all on one sprue. So you've got to get like the body, an arm and head off one sprue, and then maybe the the other arm off a different sprue, and then maybe detail or backpack off a third sprue. But it's just all jumbled. And uh, and they said things like blah, it's blah, blah, all you just over the place. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. And they ex- I, express I, I don't know, cause, cause John got so annoyed he started sending me quotes that they sent. <laughs> Let me just read some of these out. Uh, also, they weren't alone with criticizing certain aspects. E- even very Games Workshop liking people like Uncle Adam went, yeah, this uh, movement stuff with circle, uh, triangle doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, well, you know. Many of us enjoy assembly in the sprue issue isn't an issue if you're enjoying yourself. And John responded with, I will argue that the sprue layout took my enjoyment from the build, in my opinion, but it's just an opinion. Oh, that's, that's a bit too middle of the road, John. People won't like that. So the response was, your opinion is stupid. Sprues are layout to fit stuff, not to be enjoyed. Sounds like moaning for the sake of moaning. <sighs> It's not poor design. You guys are just crap at building models and want everything <laughs> spoon-fed to you. Did, did Said they ever... Mugen Ra 3K, who spelt Mugen Ra incorrectly, and I'd like to point out, Mugen Ra, if you ever see this, you're never getting a new Mugen Ra model. You suck my balls. Fuck with. The, have they actually ever seen stuff that, that John built? No, no. People who whine about sprue layer are either lazy, mentally, or physically challenged, or both. I would say Arvis, that's three choices there, so it can't be both. All three, certainly. Um, 
careful with the sprue cutters. I suggest you use scissors instead. It's one of them. So yeah, so John's been getting shit like that since the unboxing, which has just amused me. It's just like, just tell him to fuck off. Somebody complained that I already did the orc fleet recently. It's like, well, you know what? I don't have to unbox Mantic stuff. I could just go ahead and build it because I buy it. It's all mine. It's not stuff they've said to be reviewed. Uh, and as when I get to it and unbox it for an unboxing, because I think people might like it. Yeah. Go, but it's over a year old. I mean, it's not. It's eight months. Because it only came out November last year and immediately sold out on pre-order, so people didn't get it until January this year. Yeah, and even... No, no, so he doesn't. I, I think John's really taking it to heart based on the fact that I've got three days worth of messages from him going, look at this fucker, look at this fucker, fuck him. <sighs> it's Joe. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. But before we go, yes, not just the fact he's doing ghouls, but the fact he's decided that he wants to make them look like Morlocks from the time machine. Yeah, that's <laughs> amazing. The, I, I've, I got the notification on this project, and the first thing that sprung to mind was the, the old movie image from the Morlocks, and I was just, yes, please, not the reiteration that was done years later. These are I Morlocks. I <laughs> think you'll find there was no reiteration. However, I am fairly certain that Antediluvian miniatures make Morlock figures. Oh, you're not going to make me look that up. <laughs> no, no, oh, I wouldn't dream of it. But you know, I was going to say they may show up as the end of the week, but they've already been in the end of the week like fucking years ago. Um, but yeah, more oh, locks than yeah, the time machine are always good. While we are on indies of the week, you really need to make sure that you are only making very small indies and not big indies that are ages ages on the market. And God, people, you are bloody stupid. Oh, I, I just ignore them. So, oh, why are you doing this? Because I want to fucking do this. It's called hobby for a oh, fucking reason. No, it doesn't make a blind bit of difference. Somebody was going, I just skipped the big advertisement. I'm going, well, you know, you do you. The fact that none of these companies know that they're being advertised because they don't ask, we don't tell them. In fact, one of my, I don't know, uh, Westphalia, so Cave, who is a friend of mine and I speak to all the time, didn't find out that I'd featured him on Indie of the Week for a year, and then he suddenly <laughs> posted on the Westphalia Facebook page at one point. Beast of War did this on the Week After Show. I'm going, really? Did I not mention that? Oh well, that shows how little I care about Indies of the Week. I don't tell them whether or not they're getting a fucking run out in the sun, and if anybody thinks they're being paid for it, and you know, then jog on. So there's nothing we can do to stop that. It, even this is a very foamy beer. Even if a company or an indie would come to own tabletop and say, "Please feature me as indie of the week," where's what's wrong with that? It's a small company begging you <coughs> to and be watched. It's it's not quite just not GW, although it's publicly traded. GW and Asmodee and their subsidiaries are definitely not going to ever make it in. Somebody did point out things like Mantic and Privateer Press probably should because they're not indies, but they're they're on that sort of... They're big, but they're not big enough. I imagine the minute we put one of those in, there will be a fuckload of, of complaints, which will just amuse me. I might have to have a, a cheeky wank over the comments <laughs> on that one. Um, but yeah, it's really just... it's. We're avoiding the publicly traded companies at the moment and trying to feature the smaller ones. There's a guy in Germany who hasn't fucking responded to me yet, and he's got a range of Romanians sculpted by Paul Hicks, but I can't tell whether or not they're actually available anymore. <laughs> I was like, fuck me, you fuck. Anyway. Yeah, so, I, I think the... the um, yeah, draw, so, drawing yeah, the line so the on public traders... Things like that. Yeah. Drawing the line on public traded companies is possibly the most... Um, viable option to say no th these aren't indie they get money from elsewhere yeah but, I mean uh, but companies the, likes of, that, the that, likes of the warlords and mantics and privateer press and stuff they're they're big they're not as big as Asmodee or GW but they're certainly bigger than a lot of the other ones we were showing off I have a list as long as your fucking arm and people keep going why have you not shown such and such you're going uh, they're on my list <laughs> there's like that much to get through before we hit that one because the gods of dice roll haven't brought up their number yet <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm lit I just made a list one day and started going down through them um, it's weirdly whenever you start the forum post going who are indies it's like you should have just sent me a message I have them all 
<laughs> in a big fuck off list, highlighted the ones we've done. And it's, occasionally something will come up where somebody goes, can we do free? Can you find a board game Andy this week? And you know that throws me a curveball because I don't have any board games on my list. They're not real gamers. <laughs> well, they're not. So yeah, no, there's no reason why Empress wouldn't. There are a few kicking around that do multiples, like Empress, who sell other companies, and I try and avoid doing them before we've done some of them. So like V&V came up recently, but there's another company I want to do that sell V&V, but by not having to do V&V in their ND, then we can focus on the other ranges that don't actually have another place to sell or aren't as well known, and V&V is, is, is a big enough range that kind of got pushed to one side but anyway you know we're getting distracted here this isn't going to go yeah. way past our half hour if we're the, not careful the the uh, chat is annoying today next up then is hey, mac no, mox the max versus warlord saga jeez gzg was going to be done ages ago and then lloyd didn't want to drop it in one week because of something that was on it so it's still on the list and will be done it was not trades <laughs> No, no, there, there's uh, like a, a bunch of BDSM figures and Free was coming on that week before she started working with us. It was oh. just coming on. <laughs> it was just coming on from War Cradle. So it's still on the list, but every time somebody goes, why have you not done GZG? I put it to the bottom of the list. And if I add anything else in, it gets moved again. Every time I get asked, it's like resetting the clock. It's good. <laughs> yeah, McGothmog, he's been uh, doing Busy. some more stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've not been here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, March last time, if I see this correctly. Yeah, um, but in my defence, oh my god, look at what's in there. And I don't know if Mac's still here. Do you hate GZG that much? You can try and push <laughs> them under. Just keep asking for it so it keeps getting pushed to the bottom. Um, I don't know if Mac's still here or not. I'm curious because I know there was stuff that he had painted from ages ago that when he came back and got the chance to do some photographs to upload them into the galleries, he was going to upload them into the galleries. So I don't know if these are recent additions or just more of that back catalogue. I do like the fact that there's a back catalogue of miniatures like this that we're just getting drip fed. Like every now and again, you just go, here's another miniature, you slags. Just beg for me, beg. Dance, map it's dance, and then we like throw pennies at our heads or something. So, uh, according to Twitch chat, he is still here, but I don't know if he's still watching. Oh well, yeah. If he's any sense, he hasn't. He's wandered off. Um, but nice set of miniatures. All I think the recent ones are fifty-four mil, and uh, they just have a certain. They, they uh, do remind me of uh, some of the heavy metal covers from the magazine mm. way back. Uh, so these are from, I think, all from Andrea Miniatures, which is mostly large-scale models for painters. They do have a 30 or 32 mil fantasy range, which has some fucking stunning figures in it. And if any Warcraft fans are ever after Lich King, they do them under the name of... Belfagor, I think. L in both Lich 54. <laughs> no, I think it's Belfagor. But it's before he gets the full play armor, so he's still got the cowled hood up, but with Frostmark. Stunning. Absolutely beautiful. I would, I should almost get him. In fact, I should get him. Why can I not own him? Anyway, I think the 32 mil, they may be knocking on the head, though, so they may just be running down stock on it. So if there's anything you want from Andrea, and they do like a Europe and a US site, uh, it's worth having a look at. But I just, I love the... I love the painting. I love the diorama aspect of them. Yeah, they, or, they, suppose, or I suppose vignettes, aren't they? They, they yeah. are very much uh, mantel pieces to to scatter around your uh, your bookshelf. No, they're not Panzer because I know those ones, and they're not the line that was owned by this German fellow. Which is why I'm I'm still waiting for him to answer my. Um, he sold them via his blog, but it's a whole other set of Paul Hicks cups. So my Gothmog is still here. You can now ask him again. <laughs> All right. Are these more of your back catalogue of painted stuff that you're feeding us? 
because your first hit's free, or are these things that you've painted relatively recently? And while you're answering that, I'm going to go to here, and then go to there, and then go to hobby and scroll up. Da, 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 da. All probably 10 plus years old. Uh, so back in Canada. So are the Etsy Warcraft ones from Yahado models? Is my question. With some retouching. You're a talented fuck. 10 years ago, my painting, well, my painting did kind of look like my painting is now because I've not really ever exceeded that point. I plateaued a long time ago and I'm comfortable on my plateau. But uh, I absolutely love what you do. And the Andrea miniatures are just so nice. So nice. Yeah. Where do you keep them so dust free if they're 10 years old? <laughs> he got the airbrush out and blew all the dust off them before he took the picture. Uh -huh. Presumably. That would be cheating, or, wouldn't it? Or they're in a cabinet. Say that, but I have to be careful. If I click that image, what happens if it turns out it's a GW link? So I'm very, very wary of uh, of links and chats. But what I will do is I'll put this link into the chat and you can tell me if it's the same stuff. It's looking a lot like some... Uh... Yeah, you say that and then I click on it and all of a sudden it's just some Primaris Marines crotch in my face. I can't <laughs> have that. Uh, I'd say no. Yeah, you well, you would say that. But you're German. You've no, got no sense no, of humor. Nine. <laughs> anyway, it's different. We, yeah. we are getting distracted again. Bad chat. Bad I, down. Not. Sit. Sit, boo boo. Behave, sit, dog. Next, then, please. Be. Oh, smart. Short and sweet. We have been here before. We have last week, I think. Yes. Sure. Probably then. Um, oh, would you look at the shields? The, yeah, we've seen the archers, but transfers have gone onto the shields. They scream little big man studios to me. Which just goes to show what a difference a transfer makes to what I would say is a very basic tabletop paint job you know there's not a huge amount of freehand or anything else clever or even excessive highlighting on the miniatures but then you stick that transfer on with the detail and the weathering and the, the sword strokes on it and you just go you know what that's a sweet looking unit yeah now there's four at the back don't have any transfers but you know you can't have everything uh, they just have to suck it up. But I like it. It's a nice way, especially because I'm currently looking down the barrel of probably two Oathmark armies will have to be painted in September because I think we're going to tell Joe McCulloch to come over and play some Oathmark with me, hmm. whether he wants it or not. Of course, I've got to get the armies ready first because North Star went. You can't have the painted ones. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They're not the boss of me, Ray Darcy from Kildare. <laughs> very nice works. We are very the, the the in this case the uh, transfers do make a fuck ton of difference. Usually they're just um, details, but having a transfer covering the complete shield with everything, I think it also speeds up the uh, painting process quite a bit. Not having to paint all shields. Don't know who painted the Oathmark ones. Whoever it was, they're not handing them over. So. Uh, no. They don't, they don't do basic heraldic transfers. And all of their stuff is sized to specific shields. So Crusader miniatures... Viking shields will be a different size to foot sore, which will be a different size to gripping beast, which will be a different size to vitrix. So you have to know the shield size you're going for as well. Um, but if you're after that style, it's probably one of the best. If you're playing a bit more fast and loose, um, flags of war, 
do a good set of water slides so the regular transfers with a similar design aesthetic in that they've got weathered um, but they are again some of them are sized to specific shields but they're a bit more we do one size one size fits all slash none cut them down to your own heart's content if you're looking for individual transfers your best bet is to look for 3v so veni vidi vici um, and they do just transfers in a range of 6 mil 15 mil and 28 mil possibly 20 mil as well and you just go to go out like sons and they're old school GW-esque red, white, black whatever it happens to be get on with it is that what you're saying <laughs> I can't hear that you I know, know. I hear that. <laughs> hey, let's get on to the next <laughs> painting yeah, evil, she wrote on. <laughs> evil huh? dwarfs cell 9 no, no, no we're not going to go any further you're not oh well, we might. <laughs> well, it depends. You know, you say two, you say small, but put two or three on the same shield. In fact, no, oh, that's not. I have a shield somewhere where I stuck four on in quarters on a Viking shield, and they look very nice. Uh, fantasy print shop. Fantasy, fantasy print. Yeah, fantasy print shop. Do some. Mostly they do historic aircraft, but they also will print transfers for you in red, white, black and other solid colours which means you can get a range of your own transfers printed if you don't want to do them yourself on a home printer which is very good Fantasy Print Workshop Fuck it. at some point I'll do a thing on an article, stick something somewhere I thought that was the Grenadier Canon when I initially seen this project system thing project it's it's a massive but it's cannon. not it's a massive cannon, but it's not massive enough i mean it's big it could be bigger it could be full grenadier the grenadier dwarf cannon was fucking enormous you can still get it from uh, a couple of places actually um but this is i think a reaper one but it's nice seeing these skybore cyborg skibor whatever the fuck way it's pronounced evil dwarves Banking up that massive cannon. Yeah. Really... Have you seen the price for it now, though, Taurus? I think it's like sixty quid. It's fucking outstandingly expensive. Just for the. I know. I, I know it is. I know it is just like a block of lead, about the size of my head. But you know, even at that. I really love the color scheme on these little, little buggers. Yeah, I I am a fan of it. It's the underlying greenish tone to both the goblins and the dwarves and indeed the monsters they're riding on. So when you see things like the Lamassey or the Bill Centaurs. So they all have that same sort of feel behind them. Yeah, it it um it enhanced the feeling of underground light. Or yeah, like a better term. Yeah, but it, it could be a battle ties... in a large cave, and it would look a lot like that, I guess. It also ties all the models together, which is what you want in life when you're doing things like this. Mm. Are they all from the same army? Is there a cohesive theme, especially when you're putting dwarves and goblins on the same side? You know, unless everybody's got a, a uniform uniform behind them. And you might not want to do that. Having a, a similar color, either as a base tone or a shade tone or whatever, in with the 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 models will do the same job. Where it gives you that coherency across the range without actually needing to go the whole hog of everybody in this army has got a fucking uniform. We've got seamstresses staying up night and day, making sure every goblin and dwarf have got yellow and black trousers on. <laughs> you know. I've just looked up the uh, Grendel page. That gun isn't really expensive. It's the Dwarf Siege Gun Emplacement Kit for sixty pounds, sixteen pounds. Yeah, and it's got the big gun, that... a mortar, two wall sections, and some kind of organ gun. Yeah, that's that's not the one I was talking about, though. No, I, I know, but I just was curious which, on, which on how much. Steve, yeah, Steve has linked 
the one I was talking about, which is forty eight eighty, so fifty quid. I was so close. I knew it had a ridiculous price behind it and couldn't remember how ridiculous it was. I remember not buying it when I was a kid because it was about ten or twelve pounds and that was expensive for a cannon. It doesn't oh. look that much bigger than the other one. Yeah, but it's it's practically solid lead. I think Scotia sell it as well. And it may be roughly the same price, like slightly cheaper. I seem to remember it popping up in a few places. But anyway, regardless, 50 quid for a dwarf cannon. Ouchie. Yeah, and you're not going to hurl that across the battlefield. <laughs> Might do. Threw a box of dragon ogres at a friend's head once. Did you hit? Yeah, I did, yeah. Oh, at least you'd hit. Yep. Well, it would have know. been a total waste of miniatures if you didn't even hit. Oh, don't worry, they weren't assembled. It was a box of blister packs. <laughs> Six lead dragon ogres in a box, hurled at Noel's head. That's how you make him fucking dodge. Mm. I love his work, though. I wonder if I could um, encourage Selden just to send that to me. Just send me that. You don't need it. <laughs> You want to give that to me? Yeah, that type of thing. <laughs> I've got a bit of string and a conquer that I will trade. <laughs> My work? You don't know. Next up, then, you Egyptian mythology display from Dan Lee. He updated this just today, as he has shown off some of the pictures in the uh, Weekender thread. Spoilers. Who? Who? Yeah. What? Where? I don't know. Weird car accessories. Where? Best time was when Noel fell asleep in the uh, store drunk, and we just piled forty k fantasies on top of him like a barrow, and then we all left. <laughs> Left him lying on the floor in GW Belfast, covered in a mound of games. <laughs> that would have been a surprise wake-up call, I guess. You know, it's the way to go. It's a very peculiar store. <laughs> Sitting, you get drunk and then play punching contests, where you just punch the person to your right in the face. But there were whispers within GW never go to that score. That's the weird one. <laughs> so they, they stayed the fuck away from us for a long time. But to be fair, they also would do things like we'd get a phone call from the girls at head office going such and such area manager is going to come over on the 13th. Um, can you book him a taxi from the airport? Uh, where would be a good place for him to stay? Because, you know, it was... It was, uh, once again, it was in the burgeoning days of the internet, so you couldn't just go online and do all this shit. So we never got a surprise visit like they would get in England, where they could just hop in a car and drive to a store. They would have to come to us. So, you know, that's how this game plays. It's much easier. So you knew when when to stay sober? <laughs> hey, you know, you knew not to be sitting in the room punching somebody in the face anyway. I'll give you that. Well, Dan, but we, gener we generally did that after. <laughs> After you went? Yeah, well, no, when the store was closed, we didn't do it during the day. D Dan Lee definitely makes some interesting progress on his 3D printed miniatures. Yeah, apart from the gold turquoise alabaster feel, which I am loving, and I'm glad somebody's done it. Uh, also, the review of the book. It's quite interesting as well. So the story of Egypt. Yeah, that threw me um, off a bit while scrolling just now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, if people are getting into a period or a historical period and finding a decent book to read, um, it's always nice. So in this case, Johann Fletcher has done one on the story of Egypt, and there's a little review of the first four chapters about where they came from. So chapter one is in the beginning, and chapter two is. 55,000 BCE to 5,500 BCE. Very small. So, you know, <laughs> Very small. You know, that's not much going on there. A lot of, a lot of sand. Um, I hate then, sand. <laughs> then, it's, then it starts breaking down a bit more. But it's nice to have that. I mean, if you are interested in that period, I was looking at something today where they were showing off the pyramids in Sudan 
from the um, Kushite Empire when they were pharaohs, uh, which were particularly weird looking uh, pyramids, very, very steep sided. Very steep sided pyramids, more like little sort of rockets. <laughs> well, pyramidal caltrops for giants. But yeah, um, I like the fact there's a book review in there and I like what he's doing. Uh, don't tell him, obviously, you've got to treat me and keep keen. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how these things kick in. And it'd be great to see the whole display as well. Yeah, as, as we've mentioned it multiple times, the, the display is a big piece. All this we needed at some point. Do you hear, Dan mm -hmm. Lee? I know you're there. I can see you in chat. <laughs> Your little wanker. <laughs> Next, before we start to praise people too much. Yes. Um, hey, hey, the Black Flags, my children. Yeah, Jam Scott again. Jamies. Jam Scott. Uh, has been back getting cracked into some more Prussians. Can't. Another wave of them. Can never have enough Prussians. Never have enough Prussians. Uh, in this case, there's a whole other regiment being laid out. Courtesy again uh, from War Games Atlantic, I believe, from their army builder set. So stick some heads on the way you go. I think, I think, I think. Plus the metals. But it's quite nice. A big fan of dark Prussian blue. It's a gorgeous colour and should be used for everything all the time. Also, space murphs. No. <laughs> no. Why their colour is in their name. Space smurf blue. Yes. <laughs> and that is dark Prussian blue, <laughs> which is neither space nor smurf. Well. Maybe, but it's, it's, yeah. Maybe use. Uh, like Maybe not. T no. to totally weird no. idea I'm having. No. Take some yeah. Prussians and paint them up as space marines. Yeah, sure, you, you do you. Why, brain? Why do you hate me so much? I have no idea. It's because you touch yourself at night. <sighs> Maybe. Just checking. Perhaps. Anyway. You live longer when you touch yourself. Studies uh, fine. You know, it's always sex with someone you love. We learned that from Woody Allen. <laughs> Although he also loved children, so probably not the best person to listen to for sexual advice. Yeah, not going down that road again. No, not. <laughs> no, you sure? Then you shouldn't keep bringing up masturbation. <laughs> and I won't keep bringing up Woody Allen <laughs> and his love of children. You're bringing up wood. You're raising oh, the stakes here. Touch all the infants. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Christmas. Oh, Christmas, you naughty boy. This isn't the best movie ever we're discussing, you know? That is true. Oh, well, speaking they only of, touch one infant, and that's when they're putting him in that coffin. Speaking of, of that very movie, I mm. really had a hard time finding it. Right, you should have asked me. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. The, no, not in Germany. That's the thing. Yeah, no, but it's on Amazon Prime for me. Therefore, it's available to you whenever you go. I need to see the greatest movie ever made, and I go, okay, I'll just borrow it from Amazon Prime. Then it's it's even even easier. Communism works it, when it comes to sharing shit on the internet. It's communism's amazing. It's on YouTube. The complete is movie. It? Yes. Wow. <laughs> I found out he is in my watch list at some point in the near future. I'm still having two weeks off. I actually may do a watch. I'm trying to figure there out. There may be questions next week. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way how I can get away with streaming watching that movie. <laughs> right, you do what that guy did with the football. You get a controller from one of your SNESs. Oh! And then you pretend, you put yourself corner in, in picture, and then pretend you're playing like GTA and do it as a watch along like that. Oh man! Oh. <laughs> One of these. I've just brought a blizzard into the <laughs> fucking stage. Ah! Oh. Uh, bonus Amazing. points for anybody in chat who recognises this kind of controller. Is that a game thing? Dreamcast, Sega Dreamcast. Yes. I've not seen one of those since I was a young boy. The the complete console is sitting down there on my floor, next to all the others. 
Nope, Dreamcast. no N64. Had, had, had like three games. Yeah, they would though, though the console was great. But uh, that's neither here. Uh, you know, you're just you're just spinning this time out. Is this because we're down to our last three? Is that why? Could, could be. I'm, you didn't uh, think our tightly scripted <laughs> half hour would hit exactly on the half hour. Whereas I'd like to point out, if we just stop looking at your Dreamcast, we'd be fucking bang on time. Maybe. Just saying. Next, Denzian. Oh, we hadn't hadn't had a project of his for a long time. Well, we've not had one since last week. <laughs> but as we knew. It's not a hobby hangout without a Denzian project. Now, people playing along at home will notice that this is 2019. It's, you were desperate for a battle report. No. This is page one of three. He is still updating this. However, if people have not come across this, then obviously start at the first page. We will not be going through all three pages because it would make poor little Tim's head explode. <laughs> Lena says hi. Not, not like that anything would break you. Blah. Not that would make wow. any mess at all. Wow. And I'm the one drinking. Yeah. But I'm the, the old and stupid one. That is true. That is true. Anyway. Uh, so this is based on the Rebellion Supplement for Black Powder, so American War of uh, Independence, or what's it, uh, the Day of Unchecked Colonial Aggression, <laughs> I think John Oliver called it. The day of Treason? However, uh, for AWI fans, it's a big project with a lot going on, like all of Denzian's projects. The amount of detail and research in there is beyond belief. And I include his aliens project where he can't even make the inside of the um, colonists sort of pods without referring to schematics from the, you know, book of the films, which is a level of detail for a sci-fi game that is just fucking so good. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, he's changed scale, I see. I know they're just far away. <laughs> Small, far away. Doesn't matter. Oh, you race is now farther. <laughs> it's, it's all, I was watching that the other day. He's there with the Chinese in the pub. Meanwhile, they're delivering boxes of Nazi memorabilia to his house. <laughs> wouldn't have anything from the Allies' side, father. Oh, no, no, Ted. That wouldn't interest me at all. Anyway. There's a an absolute wealth of stuff here. So much so that, you know, I could almost be tempted by um, AWI myself based on this. But then I remember having to paint all those things for the Irish <laughs> Toy Soldier Museum. Fucking tricorns, tricorns everywhere. But you, you will get, apart from the painting guides, you will also see various sort of... Um, engagements within the Revolutionary War and uh, and just overall as is generally the case with Denzine's projects, just a, a wealth of information for this particular period and some uh, occasional pictures of him in a tricorn just like Tim there, but you know <laughs> less sexually provocative than Tim just Me? Saying. Sexually provocative? Well, you are with that hat on let me just get my. Oh. <laughs> Where is this channel heading? This is a very strange direction. Pumpkins! Oh, see that mold lines on the pumpkins. Yeah, I don't think he cares. What a to horrible be, person. To be brutally, brutally honest, I don't think he gives a shit. <laughs> You can get, by the way, I don't know where those pumpkins come from, but Knock do a very good set of pumpkins, which is just, I'm throwing it out there if anybody's ever after them. Oh, uh, judging by the name of the company, they're probably expensive as fuck. Yeah, but, you know, get what you pay for. It's quality. If you want a quality set of squashes for your tabletop, 
or if you want to do something particularly horrific for Halloween, then knock pumpkins are the way to go. Halloween is not an event in this country. <laughs> Just point that out again. Yeah, it is in Ireland, though, which is where I came from. Just saying. Yeah, and it should have stayed there. Just look what the Americans did to it. Or go fuck yourself, son. Anyway. So, yeah. So, that is... Um, what was it? Turnips, originally? Turnips in Ireland, yeah. Then they go over to America and went, Oh, look, these are so much easier to cart than turnips. <laughs> like a bunch of Mary Queens. This is a very, very, very long project with very it's many. Not, it's not a very long project. It's just, you know, it's, it's middling. It's average. Just fucking enjoy it, you fuck. What, what's the, the longest pro running project we have? C can you uh, tell? St I, I still think it's Dark Star by Riskany, which is getting to the point where if anybody attempts to open it, I think it breaks the website. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think that's the biggest one. Nobody knows how much is in there because nobody can open it to see. Tom tried and is now in rehab. <laughs> well, no, Tom doesn't go near it. It would just make him cry. Anyway, shall we? Yeah, turnips are a bastard to carve, but you know. Needs must. Steve needs must. All the fucking jack o' lanterns were all turnips whenever I was a kid. There was not pumpkin balls. So I was already, you know, a grown man. It's like being. I didn't see a pumpkin till I was a grown man. <laughs> I was molded by the pumpkins. If you didn't at least cut through a finger attempting to fucking do a pumpkin jack o' lantern on Halloween, then, you know, are you even Irish? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, but he had to spell across to Dan because, like I said, the project system went belly up. <laughs> motherfucker. So, next project, then I would say. Yep, so this, this is by So App Do I don't know what that is. It's French. Anyway, Rise defines. of the Remotes, and why do I immediately think of TV remotes? going out the window. <laughs> uh, I imagine he was going for Rise of the Machines, Terminator style but clearly lost on the Germans in the audience. However, uh, and this will surprise nobody at all, what Suap Dujar has done here is paint a load of infinity stuff to really high quality and, Again. Then, shoot, <laughs> and then shoot them in their own little bespoke setting. I mean, sure, one trick pony, many people would say. I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't be so vulgar as to call him that, but you know, some people are saying it. Not me, though, but others are. What's that? What's that <laughs> topic? <sighs> it's been a long time getting from there to here. Hate you, HH. Why do you hate us? Do What do we do? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I imagine it's mostly you, though. Nobody could hit me. Yeah, you're too far up there. No, well, oh, also you're, you're I'm way... certainly up myself, if that's anything <laughs> to go by. Does that help? No. Also, you're However, very far away. Well, that too. But this is um, this is uh, the Infinity Defiance, the dungeon-crawling ship game that they brought to Kickstarter last year. And, and some people in the UK have it. Some people still don't, I think, which really annoys people. <laughs> uh, all I have to say there is should have done a bit more as far as the Brexit book goes. So, just just to get this right, he's building a small piece of terrain to make pictures for his miniatures, and he's basing this on a board game tiled to a level of detail that is fucking insane. I'm going to go one step further, and he can, he can answer for himself because he's in the chat. I think he's rebuilding the board game tiles in 3D for the game, so not just for photography purposes. I th think he might do them all, but maybe I'm wrong. I'd be a little bit disappointed <laughs> No, he, just he screams. <laughs> no. Well, Go Jerry on. would be very much all. pleased if you do them all. Or at least the big ones. Be your best friend. I would give you a bit of string and a conquer, except I've already promised that to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I should introduce you to my friend, Sam the Bastard, who, uh, 
started rebuilding Space Hulk tiles in balsa wood and plastic art in a 3D version years ago. You know, he, he, he got a mock up version done in balsa, which looked amazing, but that was just his mock up. You're going, <laughs> that's more detail than I could be asked for the finished project. However, um, yeah. But yeah, defiance, it's good. I some, sometimes I've got the feeling uh, if you're into the hobby a bit too much, you start going down the masochist road. It's grandfather fifty-seven. Brar. Look at him. I mean, look at him. Oh, now, obviously, he's having to jump like that because if he lands, he's going to get a big rock up his bum. But I do like what Soupy does, even if he does do it via the medium of three D print. Oh, that horrible word. Yeah, you know, you can't have everything. You can't have everything. We can try. And we can dream. Oh, yeah, I can't. No, uh, yeah, this is true. This is very true. I do like his work. But we're not telling him. No, well, no, we don't give him a big head. Uh, I'll just say, could you painting seen your stuff and said you were shit? You're both in <laughs> Scotland, fight. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm... You said it fucking have you? Samurai pizza cats. Meow. I'm a wee bit disappointed we haven't had very much brain matter base today. Uh, I mean, there's some on the back of the dog soldier there. I'm fairly certain that he's got a tender brain matter base on that skull on his back. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to imagine the look on my wife's face if I say I've backed another Corvus belly Kickstarter when I have not finished the last one. Yeah, your best bet is not say that. Yeah, best not, yeah. not men mentioning anything. <laughs> Never mention the war. And I mean, Don't in the grand mention scheme of things, the war! In the grand scheme of things, you can work on the principle so that uh, any current Kickstarter or Kickstarters that come out down the line, they're probably going to be that CO cast stuff. You're not going to want it. That way you can avoid having to back it. Go you. Also, if if a Kickstarter arrives now, it's probably something you backed years ago. So it's not your fault that they took ages to deliver. That is true. That is very true. -na 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 -na. So, just before everybody in chat starts going on about more pizza, and I start to get hungry. Right. Next, at last, project of the evening, please. So you're in Germany, not Hungary. I can be both. All right. I'm a free radical so, particle. Uh, like Reich. Also, both Germany and Hungary. Continental Europe, all ours. <laughs> so we're going to finish off with Demon Sub. Um, and some. Yeah, we, we, we're going to finish with this project. We're not going to finish Demon Sub off. So. Relax, yeah, well, yeah, no, yeah. could go either way. <laughs> uh, so, sci fi train and scatter. This is a project we haven't looked before, I guess, because it's correct. Amundo, minor Freund. Uh, so he's got some of the Sarissa precision versions of Antonosity Workshops pods. There's no proof they copied them, but they copied them. Um, <laughs> design and inspired by, but not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that type of thing. Um, but there's also bits and bobs of scattered terrain in there from a variety of places, including things like Magic Terrain Create, which I appreciated you may like, considering you're going to be getting some for no yes, bad reason. I've, I've got the shipping notice. It's going to be here on Thursday. <laughs> wow. Yeah. See, you use two holds. Now, that's interesting, Demon Sub, because I constantly tell people, uh, just bear with me, if you're ever doing MDF, you get yourself some shellac sealer and you seal the MDF before you, you prime it. Yes, that, that is a mania's tub, but it does contain shellac sealer. And then every time I say that, the guy from Sarissa who paints their stuff, that, that fucking Imperial March place, whatever the fuck he's called, immediately will jump in and comment going, I paint all the time and I never use any primer or sealer. I go, yeah. But all your stuff looks like it's been made out of fucking fiber. Because <laughs> all I can see is the fucking fiber structure of the wood coming through. Because you've had to sunk so much fucking spray on top of it. But he does it every. I swear, it's like he's fucking stalking me on the internet. Anytime somebody goes, Do you need to seal MDF before you paint it? You're going, Yes, yes, you do. That, it's expensive, but you don't need much to seal it. And when you seal it, you get a perfect seal 
and then you can spray over the top without having to worry about it going all fucking fibrous. I can see the fibre on this because I'm not fucking sealing this because I'm not wasting my sealer on this miniature that doesn't belong to me. I, I used car uh, primer on yeah, MDF. But, that works yeah. well. That uh, seals you know, and, and... It depends on the it depends on the primer. See the primers that you would spray onto miniatures and then you go, oh, that's so thick. It's it's covered all the detail. It's ruined its shit. That's the stuff you use on MDF. You could spray... There are some car primers like the Halford stuff will spray over MDF and will immediately suck in just like you've done there. The Halford... Well, you have yeah. used Halfords, haven't you? Um the, the stuff when you spray it on, it's almost sheeny, satiny. That's the stuff you want, or you just shellac the fuck out of it. But yeah, shellac's, shellac's the way to go. Because, by fuck, otherwise you just, you can see every, I imagine you can, Demon Sub, you see every fibre that the MDF's been compressed out of. You're not looking at, like, a solid wall, you're looking at all these little jigsaw-like pieces of unusual jagged shapes squished together but like I say the guy from March Attack will immediately go you don't need eye paint all the time and then you look at the stuff he's done and he must have held the spray can that close for like half an hour it's fucking dripping off it and covered in bubbles <laughs> going I'd rather not thank you very much I'd rather have a flat surface to work on also you technically you Tatty don't bye, Chris, but you don't need but you want to have it that's a yeah. big difference yeah oh yeah very much so Bye, Crispin. Have uh, a nice evening. Don't watch that movie too often. It may always watch that movie all the time. <laughs> this is why we don't have nice things on the show. We could never agree yeah, on anything. We agree on it. It's just for some reason you won't agree with me. I like the fact that people have given you tutoring skill and ideas for the deleted double entry you put <laughs> in there. <laughs> Which just goes to show that people aren't even paying attention, so they're just going down and clicking every button they can. Anyway. I, I think that's mainly because um, most other people just let that double entry in and don't care to delete. And deleting actually takes work, and that's appreciated. Oh, I, oh, I, you know. Some people are like that. But I, li I like the uh, the Star Saga terrain that he's working on there for the scatter. Yeah, I've the boxes. And yeah, computer not the boxes, but the, uh, the very first entry that so that's Star Saga, but then there's also the uh, dining room benches, the tables, the office equipment, and the cryo... Pardon me. These was, ones. They're Star Saga as well. With the uh, weapons racks. Yeah. And I mean, they're they're chunky, PVC, bendy plastic. So you only need to dunk it in the hot water and straighten the fuckers out when you get them. Um, but afterwards, you can drop a brick on them and they'll just shrug that off and go, what's your problem? Um, so, you know, for rugged gaming terrain, it's ideal. You can chuck them in a bag and throw them in the cupboard for decades and they'll be fine. So easily transportable and you don't yeah. need to fear to break off stuff. Uh, you can't delete double entries. What I, what I do when I double entry is then go ahead and then just put something else in that entry instead. Hide the fact. Mask your errors. Well, you know, but it does mean somebody will get pinged that such and such an entry has been updated and then later on they won't get it. Because if you edit later on, they've already been informed it's out there. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. But, you know, uh, we could tell um, Tom and Tim to fix that shit. But I imagine they would stab you up. <laughs> stab you up. R yeah. Requests regarding the pro project systems are, I think, not high on their wish list. No, no, they're not. Not by a long shot. But, yeah. I'll be interested to see where that goes because we've got that and we have um, 144 144 artist is also doing I think he's actually doing the Antonosity set rather than the Sarissa copy um, of, of stuff for Stargrave but I like that I like the, the hexipodal sci-fi set look um, and I like having all the scatter inside them as well. What game are you using them for? Because I didn't notice in the entry if it said... Stargrave. Was it, is it Stargrave? Is it Stargrave? Oh, it's just Stargrave. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Stargrave, it's the new hotness. Quarantine 37 is on the way for that, for fuck's sake. I've not even had a chance to play through more than a couple of games of Stargrave with the egg. And already the first expansion is going to be coming thick and fast where you can be 
killed by bugs, you can kill by space zombies. It's one of the reasons why Sedition Wars is currently lurking around behind me, so I can do my nanotech space zombies uh, for Quarantine 37. My goal was to have them painted long before the book was published. Now the book's going to be published, and I've not even cleaned the fucking things up yet. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I, I really like the, the the shape of the MDF terrain. It's a, let's say, realistic uh, yeah. ha habitat for, yeah, you know. for weird uh, planets. Yeah, it's a good no, look. Not nothing there, too too uh, extraordinary. There's a really nice picture where it's looking through a window, and you can see not a Greedo Imperial Guardsman fighting a Dalek in the. Uh, it's one of the window ones, not that one. Although that one's that's quite Scooby Doo right there. I will say that. Run, both running in different directions. Yeah, go back up, stop, see it, top, left, left left, your other left, there you go see, through the window not a guardsman, Greedo, and a Dalek I exterminate like that. I really like that picture I exterminate paint, paint those two models and take that photo again I've good authority you may get a golden butt butt ding for it <laughs> for just this one picture <laughs> just for that one, yeah <laughs> greatest setup in movie history <laughs> fucking, just look at that picture it looks like it's been framed it's fucking magical Mind your neck in. Anyway. Yeah, uh, the problem is there. So I'm watching the delayed video of him moving it because I can't see it in real time. <laughs> in which case, it's just fucking, you know. It's like the blind leading the blind. Anyway. It's, it's almost like back in the day. <laughs> yeah, very. it's very Kubrick. You're right there. <laughs> it's good. It's good times. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a lot of nice work. Is. If only the chat had kept the fucking talk down, we'd got powered through this in half an hour instead of taking almost thirty-five minutes. Yeah, it's you. You lot are terrible. <laughs> Rap bastards. That's what I always say. I, and now I need Glute. some chocolate-covered coffee beans. Mm, chocolate-covered coffee beans. <laughs> You'll be doing a line of fucking icing sugar mm. next. You won't be able to sleep. Sleep is overrated. Sleep is for the week. Plenty of time to sleep in the grave. Indeed. One, whenever that comes. It will when it will. Not caring for one. <laughs> and, oh, it was like the end of the week a couple of weeks ago. Oh. Oh, I've just looked at what Grim Wolf linked me in Discord. I remember them. It's not the same as the Yahadu or whatever the fuck they were called. <laughs> Warcraft orcs. But again, 3D prints. Anyway, what Tor are you doing? Taurus was carving turnips, aren't you a bit early then? No, but you have to start now. If you have <laughs> any hope of getting it ready for the end of October, that's only like a month and a half, two months. Yeah, a month and a half. Six, seven weeks, get through turnip. A couple of spoonfuls a night before your wrist gives up on you. <laughs> can't, can't you get anybody else to do that for you? Children, maybe? Not unless you have children. You just give children a uh, knife and send them out to the back door. Are you just streaming? Yeah, but it's Tuesday, so they're doing Marvel Crisis. I'm All right, all, it's not I'm, worth your while even I'm, looking I'm at only them. complaining on Star Wars streams because there's a potential that other streamers will chime in. And once the chorus shouts epic, epic, my work will be Wait, nearly you're... done. Does anybody actually know what you're talking about when you say epic? Yeah, because I get on my way to say, yeah, I, I'd like to have Star Wars Epic Legions, please. Six mil or ten mil mass battle games. Just checking. Because otherwise, you know, it'd be hilarious if you spent all your time going <laughs> like an epic battle, and then they released an adaptation for Legion as a rule set that allowed you to play bigger games with more 28 mil figures. Yeah. It, and you're left going, oh, fuck, that's I, not what I I wouldn't wanted. put it past me to be that kind of moron. <laughs> Six mil Marvel, yeah, that would be interesting playing on a one by one board. <laughs> <gasps> they already have. I want to say they have a ten mil Marvel. Did they do Ant Man and the Wasp? Both come with <laughs> miniature versions. <laughs> wow, yeah, wow, wow, wow. And, and as Grimwolf probably will now just say, uh, they also have on Legion a small miniature. There's the one clone trooper holding his hand, this, uh, yes. the hologram. Execute that, Order that, 66. That could be 
multiplied for small base battles. Double oh. your points, play for longer. Wow. Rank and file Star Wars Gungans versus bots. Soap Dodger, you're a sick man. <laughs> That'd be amazing, though. To be fair, we all know, now, with the exception of Jar Jar, who was an annoying fuck, the Gungans were great. And they had, and as we're told, the Gungans had a mighty grand army, whereas the humans on that planet, the Boons, were shite. Whereas the Gungans just came out and kicked the fuck out of everyone. A Gungan army would be amazing. You just have to keep Jar Jar Binks the fuck away yeah, from Yeah, that's, that's probably the point. I, I think the Gungans could be a, a very uh, viable faction. Cavalry, infantry, yeah. massive beasts with giant shields and those fucking artillery bases. Yes. Great. And they, oh, my God. Close combat, rage combat, everything there. Gungans were where it's at. If somebody had thought to get the Gungans on side clone army could have been ruffle stomped in double you know double time execute order 66 means to think you're going to get fucked up <laughs> they're just gungans out of nowhere coming for them load of dead clones left in their wake and from the backside ewoks <laughs> yep quivering like somebody threw a toaster in the bath <sighs> oh, that's all weird those otter beers weren't bad I will say that if you're ever in Muff, treat yourself to a hot beer. Uh, I'm going to have Doom's Night before we say good night. Hmm. So, yeah. Doom's Night. It's only 11.5% Imperial Stout. So that's. Yeah. Are you catching up on what you didn't have yesterday because of your operation? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I didn't want to make it bleed any more profusely than it was going to <laughs> when he was cutting it off. So. Also, but, uh, if if your blood level alcohol is too high, it might ignite on cauterization. <laughs> Somewhere there's a poster a friend of mine got me years ago, which was you know a scientist holding up a test tube that said, "Oh my God, we find blood in your alcohol stream." <laughs> so I'm not saying that the drinking is a new thing. It's not a new thing. That that's things I tell people at work when they uh, get shoved out of the way from the coffee machine. And they look scared at me. I say, yeah, my blood levels is way too high. There's not enough coffee. <laughs> too much blood in my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> right, we should let you kids go. Yeah. It's, it's a school night. Is it a school night? I, I think so. It's good to school anymore. To the work tomorrow. To stay at home. Don't touch yourselves. Hand, hand over the, your blankets. And also, thank you, Jerry, for being here. Thank you, YouTube watchers, for being Pleasure. here. Pleasure. Also, audience, I like you very much, and also, fuck off my lawn. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>